We got Bog Off TV about disc and twigs and things. We got Bog Off TV about discs and twigs and things. We got Grab Another Seed, Chris Wobble greeting me on the Bog Off TV, TV show about disc golf. Welcome to Ball Golf TV, here with Jesse Westbell, a local Washington professional disc golfer. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Of course. Definitely appreciate you coming out. Um, so we'll start uh, the usual questions. How long have you been playing? How did you get into disc golf? And why do you keep playing this silly game that we play? Sure. Uh, I've been playing since 2005. Picked up a DX Eagle for the first time with some friends and a six pack of beer and got after it and it was really fun. and spent a few years mostly just doing that until I got serious and played my first tournament in 2008. Okay, uh, first tournament in 2008, when did you turn professional? 2008, my first tournament. Oh, very good. Yeah. <laughs> so were, uh, were you able to compete at um, that level? You know, I thought to myself that I was going to play against the best and I was going to probably win and I took second to last and I realized that I had a lot of work to do but it just propelled me to want to work harder and elevate my game to that level. Those girls were really good. I didn't know. <laughs> okay, so how, how does the women's game back then in 2008 compare to the women's game now? You know, when I first started, there were quite a few women in Washington playing. I think there was nine girls at my first tournament. It was the Fort Silicon Open. Here we are. Yeah, Fort Silicon. Yep. And, uh, uh, you know, ever since then, it seems like it's dwindled down a bit. Uh, we get a one card of four women sometimes, and that's that's a good turnout, which is sad. So yeah, here in Washington. Um, yeah, I know I've been trying to get my wife to play for years and years, and she'll get into it for a couple weeks, and then she'll get out of it for a couple months, and then she'll finally play again. Uh, what to, what do you think that we can do, at least in Washington State, to get to more women out? More events. We definitely need to have more of the ladies leagues going on. We have one up north that's being run in Monroe by Dana, I believe, and she invited me to come out. I'm going to be making some appearances there this summer, so I'm excited about that. But until she started that, there hadn't been anything like that around. So the girls kind of need more girls around to feel included in the group. So with when they show up and they're the only girls at a doubles tournament, they kind of, they don't want to come back the next week. So yeah, having the ladies leagues is the way, only way that I know that has turned into something really successful. Down in Oregon, they have the lunchtime league. There's like 50 girls that show up. It's incredible. I mean, that's what we need. We need the ladies to be the driving force behind bringing in more ladies. So there you go. If you're able to start a ladies league, it sounds like a, definitely something that we can and it's small right now. I mean, it's going to start small, but it'll grow. I have a feeling we're going to see how big we can make it. Oh, very good. Um, okay, so when I first started playing, one of the very first tips that really stuck with me, uh, Scott Papa told me to focus on being balanced, being balanced and being smooth. And that was something that really stuck with me. What do you think is the first tip that really stuck with you and you, the light bulb went off? Like, oh, that makes sense. Balance is a good one. Uh, you don't need a lot of run up if you can just, yeah, I like that one. Uh, I, I think keeping the disc flat and always playing a hyzer as opposed to trying to turn something over for distance. You throw something flat and watch it land, hyzer into the same spot, throw another disc flat and watch it hyzer to the same spot. Then you make the adjustments around that. You don't, uh, you don't need to do a lot of the angles at first, just figure out how the disc wants to fly. One, one turn, one variable, it's very easy to pay attention to that. It should be. The easiest, <laughs> easiest shot in this golf is supposed to be the, the big Heiser. Correct. Um, okay, so, well, yeah, thank you, Jesse. Yeah. Definitely appreciate you coming along. Absolutely. Uh, we are going to play three holes. Uh, we'll get into Jesse's putt. She'll go over her putt, teach you how to uh, hit the dead center chains like a girl. Really? And then uh, we will play a game of bogey. All right. Okay.
So we talked earlier about uh, peaks and valleys in your game. I know right now I'm definitely in a valley, trying to figure some things out, hoping that things click again so I can actually throw straight. Um, you had mentioned also that you are in somewhat of a valley. Yes. What are you doing mentally to try and keep yourself motivated, committed to getting back up to that peak? You know, um, I, I know from experience, from going up and down in my game, that you just have to keep practicing. And when it's feeling uncomfortable, you have to practice a little bit longer. And that sucks a little bit because it's not as much fun to play when you're not playing well, but that's the time when you just have to, you know, buckle down and put in a few more, a few hundred more putts or a few more minutes on the field and do it even if it doesn't feel right. You're gonna break through the other side. It will come back. All of a sudden, one throw, all you feel it, and it just, it opens up the floodgate, so. That's bad. Yeah. So what, to, what about if you're in the middle of a tournament round and things just don't feel right? Your head's not there, you don't have any clue that your arm is even attached <laughs> to your body. How do you deal with those rounds and push through and continue to at least try and keep your head in, in there? That's when I usually put my distance drivers away and I pull out my fairway drivers or my mid ranges and I lots of times I'm playing in the woods so you know the distance isn't necessarily what's important you just got to put it on the right line so find your straight line and try to stick to it as much as possible even if it goes straight a little bit into the woods it's still better than hooking hard still and skipping straight. off so yeah just keep those straight discs going when things aren't feeling right okay so try and keep it simple so if you're <laughs> if you're struggling out there you don't know what's going on you can't figure it out try and stay mentally strong disc down definitely some good advice yep nailed it So now let's get into your putting style. Okay. What uh, what do you putt with first? I am putting with some soft judges, and uh, they go straight, so I like them. Okay. That's <laughs> definitely a plus. So go ahead and walk us through your putting style. Go through your stance. Go through your pre-putt routine. All right. And, and let's let's learn your putt. I generally like to stand uh, with one foot in front of the other, straight at the basket, and I push off with my back leg. My Hand is kind of with the finger on the outside, fanned on the inside, and I do a push with just a little snap at the end to make it go straight. Are you starting your putt on a hyzer, flat, and hyzer? Does it change? I think it starts pretty flat, and then it usually comes out on the hyzer. So what, when you line up, what are you lining up off of? Where, where is your aim point? Are you aiming from your base? Or are you aiming off of your shoulder? I like to do the straight up and down pendulum right in front, coming down to my stomach, and then snapping it about chest level. Okay. So you're aiming off of your chest? Yep. But going straight mostly at the basket. Yep, straight. Okay. Always straight. Okay. <laughs> Very good. So what to, what's your pre putt routine? If that's your lie right there, and you're going to make that putt, what do you do before you approach your disc? Is um, there anything mentally you do to prepare? You know, I'm usually looking at my line as I'm walking up to it. So I'm picturing that putt from 10 feet back, from 5 feet back, and then you're right there, all of a sudden it looks a lot closer. And I'm usually ready by the time I get there. I don't have a huge pre-routine. Okay. I've been thinking about it as I approach my disc, as other people are shooting. I'm always looking at my own line. Yeah, let's see it. Walk us through. All right, it. so looks good. I'm gonna walk up to it, line it up. Okay. So we're gonna play a game. Yep. So we'll get into our game of bogey. Um, go over the rules. So we got two putters. Two putters. If you make a putt, if you make one, I have to make one. Okay. If you make two. I have to make two. Okay. If you make one, I still have a chance to make two. Give me a letter. Well, I'll, if I make two, it goes back to you for one chance to prove it. Gotcha. So if if you make that putt, there's no letter. 
but then I take control of the box. Gotcha. So, okay. And we'll, we'll get into it. Sounds good. This afternoon. This session is about to begin. has the floor.
The year is 1940. And something isn't right. So that was a very, very long match. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out. Of once course. Again. It was fun. Definitely. Um, had to come down to, like you said, cheating. I had to throw some putts that you know, definitely if you, weren't orthodox. If you got those putts, I guess I can't call it cheating. Yeah. I got to practice it. Got to, got to use them out there on the course. Yeah. So again, we got a ball golf TV shirt. Sweet. Awesome. Good card on the back. Thank you. All right. Thank you much. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. There you go. Ball golf TV. Watch it. We got Bog Off TV about disc and twigs and things. We got Bog Off TV about discs and twigs and things. We got Grab Another Seed, Chris Wobble greeting me on the Bog Off TV, TV show about disc golf. Hello, my name is Saul. I'm going to teach you how to do a floppy. Um, you just hold, hold your finger, put your thumb right there, and then put your fingers just right there, except like your thumb, and then just scoot back. One, two, three, four, five, and then just, you, you just want to try to flip it, just like this, like flip. You just want to do it like that. It's a really simple thing. You just want to do it like, like, flip. It's really, really easy. One, two, three. See, 
don't want to do that. You don't want to make it not flip. You want to make it like this. That's the flippy. Thanks for watching Ball Golf TV.